I'm CG, and I'm back! I'm so happy to see you here! Today, we'll be discussing a very interesting topic! Today, we'll learn how to find the area of squares and rectangles. Let's jump right into it! Let's begin! It's usually pretty easy to see when one thing is bigger than the other. But how about these two envelopes? Which do you think is larger? Hmm, let's see. This is hard. They don't match up. One is wider, but the other one is higher. That's when knowing how to find an area will help us. Let's find out which one has a larger area. In math, we call the size of a surface the area. Not the length or width, but the whole area. I'll show you how to measure it. It's easy. We need to find out how many square units will fit inside the surface. Oops! Square units? You never heard about that. Let's start from it, as it is the base of our topic. A square unit is just a square we will use to measure surface. We use inches and feet to measure length and height. We use ounces and gallons for volume. For area, we use squares. For smaller surfaces, like a screen of a phone or TV screen, squares with a side of one inch work fine. For a classroom or soccer field, a larger square with a side of one foot is better. Our square unit will be a square inch. I'll cut out some square inches to measure the envelope areas. We need a piece of paper, a ruler, and scissors. I'll put a mark on each side for an inch and draw lines. Let's cut some squares. Cool! Let's double check. Yep, exactly one inch long and one inch wide. Let's place our little squares on top of each envelope like this. Now let's count how many squares we need to cover each envelope. 25 squares for the yellow one and 24 squares for the envelope with the green edges. That means this one has an area of 25 square inches and this one has an area of 24 square inches. Well done to all those who said the yellow envelope was bigger. Aren't square inches useful? But what if we want to find out the area of something bigger? Say, the hallway outside of your classroom. Do you think it would be a good idea to put little squares of paper all over the hallway? Of course not! That would be funny! Luckily, we don't have to do that. Here's how to find an area without using actual pieces of paper representing square units. You just need to know multiplication! Let's go back to our envelopes and measure the length and height of the yellow one. Five on one side and five on the other. So, five times five gets us 25! That's the same number as we got when we covered this one with square units. Let's quickly check this one. Six inches length and four inches height. So, six times four is, yep, 24. Not just 24, but 24 square inches. Try it yourself. See this invitation card? Eight inches tall and five inches wide. What do you think the area will be? Yep, five times eight equals 40. But 40 what? Bananas? Nope, 40 square inches. You see how useful the multiplication table is in finding areas? And you know what? This table has its own surface, right? One side is 12 squares, and so is another one. These squares aren't an inch long, neither are they centimeters, so we'll just call them square units. How much is 12 times 12? Oops, it's written right here. So our times table has 144 square units. Okay, 
Now let's do the same thing, but for a larger surface, like a field. As you can see, here we are using square meters instead of square inches, but that's not important. We still use our multiplication table. 2 times 8 equals what? Can you do it? Great job! 16 square meters it is. What about this farm? What is the area of this one? If you didn't learn the times table by heart, don't worry, you can take a sneak peek. Yep, 18 it is. Our square units for this surface was a yard, so 18 square yards is our answer. You got it. Great job. Now you can find the area of anything. That's it for finding areas. Want to do some more practice? I have tons of practice exercises for you on my website so you can be an expert in no time. Thanks for studying with me today. See you at the next subject.